All right, welcome back to part two of the ellipse video series. In this um, video, we're going to be talking about an ellipse whose center is no longer at the origin. We know from class that the example that I've given you um, right here, that our center of the ellipse is at 1, negative 2. And what we're doing here is it's just, it's, it's the H and K we've been dealing with all semester. Um, H refers to the X coordinate of the center and the K refers to the Y coordinate of the center. And what you're effectively doing is you're looking here, you've got an x minus 1, so you take the opposite sign, so there's your 1 there. You've got y plus 2, take your opposite sign, you've got a negative 2, your center's at 1, negative 2. Now, we need some other things. We need to know what's a squared, what's b squared, what's c to plot our foci. So we have a squared and b squared and c squared. And we say that with an ellipse, our a squared is the bigger number. Well, there's my 9. 9 is bigger than 4. So a squared equals 9, b squared equals 4, and c squared is a squared minus b squared, and that equals c squared, so 9 minus 4 is 5. That being said, a, a equals 3, and b equals 2 and then C is really just the square root of 5 which is approximately 2.2 and of course this value is both positive or negative so it's positive or negative square root of 5 and we'll talk about that in a sec so that's really all we need to um, graph this thing so in black I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is plot my center so my center is at 1, negative 2. So I go 1, negative 2. There's my center. And I'm just going to make a note here that that's 1, negative 2. And that's the center. Next thing I want to do is note, is my parabola horizontal or vertical? Well, let's look at it. A is under the, or A squared is under the Y. So it's a vertical parabola. I said parabola. I meant ellipse. It's vertical. The ellipse is vertical. And we know that our A distance here is 3. So I start at my center and I go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And there's a vertex. And then I start at my center and I go down 3. 1, 2, 3. There's another vertex. Now, that takes care of A. So what about B? We'll do that in green. So I start here again at the center and I'm going to go left and right too. 1, 2, and then 1, 2. And these are my uh, co-vertices. Some books might call them a minor vertex. What else? We've got to plot our foci. So they're going to go at a distance roughly 2.2 .2 from the center. So 1, 2.2, 2 and 2.2. .2. Okay, so here we go. Now we've got to label um, our foci. Here's what I did. I started at my center, and I went up a distance of 2.2, .2, which is also more accurately known as the square root of 5. And I went down that same distance. So when I label my points, I need to take that into account because I I can't just say, oh, well, this is 1 and 0.2, because that's not accurate. I know my x-coordinate of this point is 1. I know my x-coordinate of this point is 1. And what I essentially did for this top um, coordinate is I started at negative 2, and I went up the square root of 5. So why don't I just write that down? Negative 2 plus the square root of 5. And that's a perfectly valid answer. Again, with this guy, I started at 
negative 2 on my y, and I went down the square root of 5. So that was negative 2 minus the square root of 5. And then the only thing I have left to do really is graph it, and I'm going to use these little ellipse drawing tool because it's so much better than those lopsided lemons I was drawing yesterday. And I've got that guy. So now, there's my graph. I've got my foci noted. I've got my center noted. That's really all I need to do. So let's look at another example. Um, how about this one? You try to work it out on your own. Pause the video, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and work this thing out. So I'm going to list where my center is. So my center is at negative 1, positive 2. And then I've got to note what's a squared, b squared, and c squared. Well, a squared is 9, which makes a9, I'm sorry, a3. b squared is 4, so b is 2. And c squared, remember c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, 9 minus 4 is 5, again. And c squared, uh, not c squared, that's wrong. c equals the square root of 5, and again, that's plus or minus. All right, so here's what we got. We've got a center. We've got our a, b, and c squared. We've got a, b, and c. only thing we need to know is, is it horizontal or vertical? Well, we know it's horizontal because the bigger number is under the x. So I start at my center point, which we'll put in black. I'll color, try to color, do a better job color coding that this time. So I go negative 1, 2. Here's my center. Negative 1, 2. All right. Now, we said that this guy was what? Vertical? Nope. It's horizontal because, remember, 9 is with the x. So it's horizontal. And now we just go over 3 in this direction. So that's there. Oop, I was going to color code it. Put these in blue. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Notice I'm just counting. This is just a distance. These guys over here, they're not coordinate points, they're just distances from the center. So my B is 2. So I go up 2, and I go down 2. And then I need to go over the square root of 5, which we said in the last example was about 2.2 and it still is. So that's there and that guy's in there. Okay, so what do we do? We had our center which I wrote all over so I'm going to rewrite that. We saw that stuff. Okay, so our center here, center, center s s wow the center is spelled c e n t e r and that is at negative 1 2 my foci here notice that my y coordinates are still 2 so let me write these in red two and two and of course I'm going to need to erase that to make more room but my x coordinates what I need to do is look at these guys this is actually negative one minus the square root of five so that's negative one minus the square root of five comma and this guy is negative one plus the square root of five So there we go. The only thing left to do is to actually draw the ellipse. So I'll go here. 
and it's going to look something like that. All right, next example. Completing the square. So we're given the equation, general form. We want to convert to a standard form of the ellipse. So here's what we need to know. First of all, we've got to be able to recognize that this is, in fact, an ellipse. And we know that it's true because we've got our x, square, x squared and our y squared. There's a plus sign. They're both positive, And they have different coefficients. That qualifies for an ellipse. So what we're going to do is we're going to group all our x, um, x's together. So I'm going to have 9x squared minus 18x. And then I'm going to leave a space, and I'm going to group my y's. So that's plus 4y plus 16y. And now what I've got to do is I've got to add 11 to both sides. So that's going to give me a positive 11 over here, and this guy's going to go to 0. So I've got nothing here, and I've got 11 on that side. All right. Now, here's the part where... With a circle, we would just go ahead and say, okay, well, I'm going to take eight, a negative 18, I'm going to cut it in half and square it. But I'm not going to do that just yet because I've got this 9, which I need to factor out. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, that's going to give me 9 and then x squared minus 2x. I'm going to rewrite that. So that's x squared minus 2x. And I got minus 2 because 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. 9 times 1 is 9. And then I'm going to take half of negative 2 and square that so I get a 1. Over here I'm going to factor out my 4. That's going to give me y plus 4y and then half of that is 2. 2 squared is 4. And then that is going to equal 11. Now I've got to wait for a second and think about this. I've got a 1 here and a 4 here, but I'm adding much more than 1 and 4. This guy right here is really 9 times 1, so I'm adding 9. And this guy, I'm adding 16. That's 4 times 4. So, that says that I'm adding a total of 36 here. 11 plus 9 plus 16 is 36. I've got my 9. Remember, I just go here and say, okay, well, what's the square root of x squared? And that's x. Get my sign from the middle term. And then the square root of 1 is 1. And that's squared plus 4. Oh, that's supposed to be a y squared there. So that's going to be y plus 2 squared. And then what's next? Last step. This is supposed to equal 36, or supposed to equal 1, and I've got it equal in 36, so what I have to do is divide by 36. So, that's what I'm going to do. Divide this side by 36, divide this by 36, divide this by 30, 36, and then simplify these fractions. 9 divided by 36 is 1 over 4, so that's going to give me x minus 1 squared over 4 plus this is going to be y plus 2 squared over 9 and then that's going to equal 1 and I'm going to erase this so you, you can see it better anyway that's con that's completing the square within an ellipse in the next video we will be discussing hyperbolas and that will, of course, be for tomorrow.